If you're here right now watching this, you probably are already familiar with sound peats and who they are, or at least are somewhat curious about them. So anyway, sound peats, these guys from Shenzhen have been churning out new models like their lives dependent on it lately. I've done four to five different sound peats videos within the span of 365 days, and that's a lot. And that's not even covering every single model they've launched. Now, this latest one though, let me say up front, is quite special. If you're looking for a $60 earbud that performs way better than it has any reason to, you need to watch this video. So this is the Soundpeats Mini Pro, and I've been testing this for the past few weeks, so here are my thoughts to share with you. Let's do it after these messages. All right, let's hit up the specs. So the Mini Pro is available in any color as long as it is black. There's a Qualcomm QCC 3040 chipset that brings active noise cancellation, pass through, mono, and gaming modes. Uh, the latter drops the latency to about 65 milliseconds. That's pretty good at the expense, of course, of battery life and Bluetooth range. And speaking of which, we have Bluetooth 5.2 on board with AAC, SBC, and Aptex adaptive support. Uh, there's no multi-point in case you're wondering. Uh, water resistance for the earbuds themselves are retained from the regular Mini at IPX5. I was able to drag listening time to 5.1 hours with active noise cancellation on at 65% volume. And if I activated gaming mode on top of that, it hovered around 4.4 hours, which is actually better than I expected because at five hours, regular battery runtime, I'm usually seeing about three or three and a half hours on other earbuds. And weight per earbud is five grams, by the way. These do touch controls that accept single, double, triple taps plus hold commands. Uh, there's no app, so they're not customizable. Doing all the audio grunt work in the background here is a 10 millimeter driver, and there are three mics per side, one by the LED, I'm not sure if you can see that, one towards the top and one facing the back. Uh, there are oval ear tips here that cover a, a mesh grill, and I'll tell you what, the ear tips are muy muy rapido to install, man. Look at that, how fast it is. The case kind of looks like a pebble, doesn't it? It's compact, yet easy to grasp with a sweaty hand if you have to. Uh, there's no wireless charging, just USB-C at the back here. And in terms of build quality, I'm really impressed with these guys. Both the case and the buds, they're spot on, really well put together. There's shiny plastics in here in the cavity, easy to clean with a Q-tip. The only knock that I have, if I have to, is the somewhat bendy lid. You see this, if I apply this silly amount of twist, you'll see it shift, but most of you won't experience that at all. And since we're here, let me pop the other bud back in and let's do the shake test. Uh, the lid locks in place, which is really nice, and the magnet holds things, the hold these things in place, so double thumbs up. All right, it is that time again, guys. We're outdoors doing the Bluetooth range test on these guys, and I'm starting to regret wearing my van shoes because we just got an inch of snow, and yeah, my toes are freezing. Anyways, I have some Zyno Abedin playing on my Pixel 6 on Tidal right there. And we're gonna take these Mini Pros on a walk from the back of my house towards the side. And we'll see how the Bluetooth 5.2 on these things handle uh, the whole range thing, all right? So there's the phone over there. I'm standing around at 25 feet. And usually on the Pixel 6 with 5.2 from Qualcomm chips, uh, it'll last around 40 feet before we start hearing issues. So once I hit here, yep, on cue, we got signal loss. Um, and I tried these earlier in terms of range. These things last around about 50 feet before they start getting, uh, before we get a uh, disconnect tone. But the big thing I want to talk about here is the fit of these in my ears. Look at this, I'm going to get closer. They stick out at this widest point from the ear, around two to three, or in, in fact more, about three to three and a half millimeters away from my ears. So. Yeah, it kind of protrudes out and some of you may or may not like it. But anyways, I want to move on to the mic test for these and see how they sound. Uh, so let's head down to the street. I'm standing by the roadside right now waiting for traffic to pass through. It's supposedly rush hour, but it's been really, really quiet. But good thing we have a uh, wood cutter right here and then here come, here come some cars. Hopefully you can hear the samples. So as I talk, you can hear that the, and these have Qualcomm QCC 3040 chips. So the algorithm is around the same. My voice quality is good in it. The voice is nice and deep. Here comes the big truck. Um, and the noise suppression does its job. There's no, there's very little like uh, digitizing and you know, it's pretty good. It doesn't sound like I'm really underwater or anything. So it's very serviceable. Oh, here comes a bunch of traffic. Uh, I'm going to try to cut to that. But wind suppression, not, not that hot. They do reach the limits pretty easily. And one thing I did notice too is when I do get phone calls, if you're in active noise cancellation mode, it doesn't go into uh, pass-through. I like that because it's safer. 
but in this case it doesn't do it oh here comes a nice big truck oh yes yeah so anyways uh, these things do their job and i'm pretty happy with them so anyways let me head back to the studio before i freeze my fingers and toes off Okay, so how do these sound, you may ask? Well, the short answer is pretty bloody darn impressive, as a matter of fact. Like bass, for example, it gets down low and it stays toit all the way down, so bass heads among you will be happy. Uh, high frequencies are another strong suit, while mids, like voices, are good, although they start losing composure at volumes higher than 80%. And by the way, speaking of which, please spare your ears and don't use these at 80% volume or higher if you can, because these things get very loud. Don't ask me how I found out. Which means also that amplification through the 10 millimeter drivers is nice and strong. Now, what I don't know is if these things sound any better than the regular $36 mini, which I might add were highly rated when they first came out late last year. And thankfully I asked Soundpeats for one and they were kind enough to send me one. So I'm gonna do a live unboxing right now. This is not open yet. I'm gonna unbox this, pair it and test the sound and compare the two. And of course, I'm gonna be doing post-editing. You'll be seeing cuts here and there because, you know, I got standards, dang it. So I'm gonna test this so I can conclusively tell you once and for all if the Mini is better with the word Pro or not. Let's do this. Here I was thinking that the Mini's case was already small, but the regulars just downsizes it a little bit more. Pretty cool. Uh, it, the material is a little bit slicker though. What? What? This is $36? It sounds amazing. It sounds so good. I, I can't believe it. It's a little bit more muddled than the pros and yeah, the voices are a little bit suppressed. Uh, the lows don't hit it. I don't feel it as much as the pros either. It doesn't hit the sub bass, but the clarity, oh my goodness, the imaging. Oh my goodness, this is not bad at all for $36. I'm impressed. Soundpeats, really, really nicely done. And I'm not surprised now why it was so highly talked about and really well reviewed out there by the people. Yeah, this thing, definitely get it if you're on a budget, $36 but it also gives you a difference of how the pros sound and I really like how much more mature and also warmer sounding these pros are. So that concludes the possibly longest side note in the history of broadcasting. Yes, and I'm darn proud of it. But anyways, let's talk about noise cancellation on the Pro real quick. This thing is solid, I really like it. It's able to suppress uh, the noise produced in say a busy restaurant or an air flight into the sound of a moderate rainfall, for example. It's around a 34, 35 decrease in decibels. And finally, we have earbuds that you don't have to pay through your nose just for the branding stamp on the outside of it, or the privilege of getting the latest and greatest Qualcomm chip included in it, because really it's not. This chip is as common as this kind of chip nowadays, guys. Really, you can't beat the price to performance slash feature ratio here. At $60, it really is hard to really criticize this thing, guys. Maybe access to the Soundpeats app perhaps or a stronger IPX rating. And in terms of shape and design, the earbuds are inoffensive for the most part, but the Mini Pro in this color and form factor, it looks less like a earbud and more like a ear growth, especially my ears, they protrude out really far. The Mini Pro gets a lot of things right, guys. Like the most important things here, sound, fit, tech, and price are all pretty much spot on. And personally, I'm really having a hard time not liking this thing. But on the other hand, I do and can see that if you have ears that get irritated easily, or if you have smaller ear canals, these won't be staying in your ears very long, if at all. And I guess that's really what the regular smaller mini is all about. But this $60 asking price, it does make you wonder if other higher-end pro earbuds out there, such as the Jabra Elite 7 Pro, the AirPods Pro, or the Liberty 3 Pro, that cost between $170 and $180, are actually three times better. Yeah, food for thought. But anyways, with all that said, I'm gonna be giving the Soundpeats Mini Pro a gear up score of 8.3 out of 10. And this is how I broke it down to get the final score. If you have any questions about it, feel free to comment down below.
and I'll probably ignore it. So this is where I traditionally ask you to subscribe and follow this channel. So I'm not going to say anything. You know what to do. Mash and kill the button down below, turn on the bell notification icon, give me the 50,000 subs. Yes. Anyways, a warm thank you also to my Patreons for your immense belief and support all this time. And you guys out there can also be semi-famous too, because if you support me, you're not only helping me get me the latest stuff to review, because it really does, you'll get a shout out every episode. Like in this case, hello Super Yen and hello Barbecue Jones. You can check out his barbecue channel. If you're a vegan, you're gonna be a meat eater right after that. He's just starting out, so go visit his channel to show your support. So remember to thumbs up if you like this video guys and comment nicely down below. And remember to do something loving and kind for somebody in this world because guess what? The world needs it more than ever and keep supporting the Ukrainians out there. I love you guys and I'll see you the next time. Peace out.